Hey there, Postal here. Today we're gonna to take a look at the 302. This plane is available for about four weeks. Premium tier seven Soviet super fast jet uh, with some big weaknesses that you wanna be aware of before you do anything with this plane. Let's take a look. if it's going to let me actually load in. You are approaching the front line. Off we go. Attention. Cool, thanks. You are entering the combat zone. Get ready for battle. Good luck. Let's take this 302 and do some fun stuff with it, hopefully. I'm going to go straight for the center here. Uh, we are top tier. We've got a BF-109G, a Spitfire 5, and an ME-410 to go against. I'm not really worried about any of those. Especially with my particular build. Let's go for what we can go for, which is going to be the heavy fighters. We've got such a small amount of maneuverability on this thing. Oh, hello, sir. That it's really built for taking down the heavy fighters. Oh, I think somebody else actually got that kill. I mean, somebody on the red team. I know somebody else got it, but I think a red, a red got it. All right, let's see what we can do here. I'm trying to stay off my boost for the time being, so that way when I need to use it, I can use it. Cannons aren't the strongest, but I mean, they're just good enough. I feel like I keep... Ooh, I'm going to say a blue person got that. Um, doing it up and over here. Get our boost on. Stop turning towards me. Turn away from me. Oh, you listen. Thank you. Dust boost in. In the red for airspeed. There we go, we got the sector. And BF 109G is doing well. Doing well enough, that's for sure. Um Spitfire. Hello, sir. They're gonna ram me. Cool. Unfortunately for him, I was able to get my guns on target quickly. Do not go head on versus that guy. J4 M is basically a heavy fighter, so I can outmaneuver it. Probably barely. Ground. Uh, we've got three sectors here. Not overly, like I said, not overly worried. And if these guys aren't going to pay attention to me, then I'm going to make them regret their lack of decision. Right there, poor gameplay? I don't know what I'm trying to say. But, I am trying to say that they need to come at me, bro, and actually take me on. Because in the meantime, I'm just going to start tearing things up. There's a multi role fighter inbound. I'll be fine. Oh, look at that. Spent too much time going for something I couldn't even get. Let's go get this bomber really quick. We'll use our airspeed to completely get away from anything that's coming at us. Go to a very high altitude, or at least very high for this tier. Let my guns cool off. Cool. And back down we go. Um, Corsair, what you doing? This is the same Corsair that uh, was kind of sort of near us. I'm not going to turn with him. I'm going to use my speed to get away from him. Ooh, this BF-109 is actually playing really, really well. Uh, well, okay. Now he's not. Now you're wasting time, sir. Now you're wasting time, sir. You've got a short-range 30mm cannon that, yes, can hurt. But... 
Not enough for me to care. Go ahead and see if I can get repaired here. It set me on fire, which is pretty annoying. But the game's over. Game over, man. That. Let's go get his yak. Get our boost on. It's a yak I wouldn't go head on versus. There we go. Let's go get the 26. No, this wouldn't be the smartest idea because it's moving away from us, but we've got the airspeed, right? Can I get it before the game's over, though? Nope. The answer is nope. Victory is ours. Uh, not too bad for first game in days and days and days. Let's take a look at the second game. All right, we're top tier again. This time we are actually loading into the battle. That's nice. And we got that BF109G. We've got that same Spitfire. We've also got a Doe 217. Looks like our Spitfire's crashed or quit. Don't know why he'd quit, so we're gonna say he crashed. And then we got a BF109F, which is basically useless. So, although I'm not worried about the enemies, any more than I was last time. I'm not encouraged by our team either. All right, so let's go ahead and first thing I always do on a big map like this is get my boost on, get to where I wanna go, get to my highest optimum altitude. And then I let off the gas for a little while, get my boost back relatively quickly here. Um, yeah, let's go for this guy. Ah, shoot, I should've gone for the other guy. Oh, look like he's actually going for somebody else. Because he could have gotten behind me and completely wrecked my face. Well, my butt. Anyway, the key to this plane is not to dogfight in it, right? What we want to be doing with this particular plane is 100% boom and zoom tactics. If you haven't gathered that, I'm going to lay it on you. That's the thought process for this plane. You want to go for the heavy fighters, because heavy fighters don't have nearly the turnability. I say as I go for a regular fighter. Oh, I should have killed that other fighter too. Okay, he's still alive. I could have totally gotten him killed even though we would already captured the sector. Anywho, the goal with this plane is to use your phenomenal, and it is especially for this tier phenomenal. It's even good at tier 8, it's no big deal. Use that speed to keep yourself out of danger. Well, it looks like I've got a fighter coming in behind me here. I do. So I'm going to boost away. Come around back. Yep, so that was that. That Spitfire. Didn't have to really worry about him again. If I'm using my speed, it don't matter. I'm not going to go turn fight with a Spitfire, because I don't want to die. You should be leaning in on your strengths with whatever plane you're in. What is your plane's strength? Speed? Well then go fast. Like, why would you try to turn? What is your plane's strength? Air to ground capabilities? Then why are you trying to shoot at aircraft? There's a time and a place, right? For everything. But you should be leaning in on your strengths more than the one-offs. Like right now, I've got this P-40 behind me. I'm gonna speed away. He can outturn me, even though it's a P-freaking-40. So let's go up to the higher altitude. Let's go for a heavy fighter here. Done. Yak-9U is up way too high. Let's go ahead and make him regret his decisions. The Yak-9Us do not have that kind of, ooh, he got me dizzy. Do not have that kind of flexibility, so we're not gonna go down to his level and try to turn. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go straight up here. And I'm gonna turn around, yep, yep, yep. He could still shoot me here. Nope, he's floating through space now. Hold him up to where he can't do well. 
And let's go. B17G? I don't like B17Gs. Oh, never mind. It's B17. This thing B32. B17s can be a pain in the butt. But they're not overly worrisome. Although I am kind of on low hit points. And I've got some help. So let's take advantage of that help. And I'm tapping the guns here because these do overheat very quickly. There we go. Even for 20 millimeter cannons. I'm kind of back in the same place I was before. The enemy team is not capturing sectors, I say, as they capture a sector. Got myself another Akamatsu. Let's go over here. We're going to defend a little bit. Which I don't typically defend in this plane. It is much better at attacking. Planes like this with super speed and poor maneuverability tend to do better at just... You know, getting from sector to sector and capturing them. The Doe 217 is above me. I know it's above me because I just killed the B17, so... Yep. Let's go ahead and catch up to him. Ow! Oh, man! Friggin' dig, dude! Stupid yak! What the heck? So, yeah, I don't feel comfortable going for the, the 217 now because I'm on such low health. Freaking Yak9U being a turd. I guess I'm lucky to have survived that shot, to be honest. So, let's see if I can knock him out. Set him on fire. Let's move along. Gonna move over here to the B17. The B17 is on full health. Um. I'm gonna move straight across here. I'm gonna punch my engine cooling. Hold it down. Leave a trail of fear. And let's get this heavy fighter. I don't know what their fighters are doing, but they're not around me, so that's okay. Yep, expected them to get that airfield, but I'm not really worried about it. We're up double points on them. I don't like killing friggin' planes outside of sectors. Can you go inside a sector for me, sir? Thank you. Get my guns on target good enough there. So we're just gonna move along. Again, I'm not gonna turn with him. Why would I turn with him? Um, it, it make enough sense. Oh, kind of like going head on versus Yaks. Why are all the Yak 9s over here, man? Oh man, I sure hope I don't um, get derped out of existence right after. Squall line. We shall see. Doesn't look like it. We cannot support you any longer. But who knows, again, when it comes to Yak 9s and Yak 9 U's. All that RNG, man. I'm putting on pneumatic control assist just because I want to get behind this guy right away. Here we go. Turning back around. There's so many Yaks <laughs> over here that any one of them could, like, Again, just dirt me out of existence. So let's pick them off one at a time. Like we don't want to get into a, a dogfight with all these guys. We don't want to get in the middle of all of them. What we want to do is just pick them off, be the hyena, find the the one that's off by itself, try to do some damage to it there. Whoo, man! Dang it. Alright, now the game is truly over. Yak 9 U and a Yak 9. Let's see if I can get over here before the game's over. Nope. Not quite. Not quite. But we were able again to just, you know, dictate the engagements. I knew that we would be able to right out of the gate. And 
It wasn't it wasn't something that I did anything crazy on. You just play in your wheelhouse. First match there, we only captured one sector. I preferred to try to capture more sectors in this plane, but I didn't need to. 11 kills, most of them probably defending. So, yeah, six while defending. It was fine. I knew it was, gonna, it was a good matchup, right? We had the ability and the plane to come out on top versus those planes, and it was pretty comfortable. Let's take a look at the second battle. All right, so we were able to get 15 kills. Uh, 500 capture points. I actually captured three sectors in that particular battle. There's quite a few battles that, you know, you just have to capture a million sectors because your team needs to be carried. And this plane can do that capturing because simply because you can get from sector to sector quickly. You're going to run into things like Yak-15s. You're going to run into things like P-61s. You're going to run into things that are going to put you out of your comfort zone. These two particular battles that we had didn't run into that, but you're in a tier 7 premium, you are going to run into a lot of tier 8 games. You need to understand that if you get this plane, it is all about its speed. What's funny is the overall airspeed here shows relatively weak, 62. That's because its base speed is really low. It is about the, the boost on this plane. And regulating that and balancing it out. It's all about the speed on this plane, and you want to make sure that when you are leaning in on that, that you're mindful of it, that you're mindful of your engagements, that you're mindful of what you're going against, and how to attack that. The converse side of that is, what if you're going against a 302? You see a bunch of them suddenly, because everybody and their brother's buying them. What do you do? Well, what kind of plane are you in? If you're in a slower plane, then you really just need to keep your head on a swivel. You need to be paying attention to what's going on. If a 302 pilot's playing well, he's just going to hit you and keep moving. And that gives you a whole lot of options. You want to make sure that you're paying attention to you know, those speed demons that are flying around and not becoming a victim of them. And what you can do in the meantime is capture your sector and move on to the next one. When he does come around, use some of the keys that you've got. Use your F4 key to target him for your bots. Use the F3 key or the F7 key. F3 key is going to determine and tell your team that, hey, I'm attacking a sector or, hey, I'm defending a sector and I need help. So they're going to come and help. F7 is going to say, I've got an enemy on my tail. Please clear the tail. Again, you're going to be having your bots assist you, and maybe even your humans. And so you want to make sure that you've got that thought process when you're going against something like this or, you know, any really fast plane that you're not able to catch up in because you're flying a Spitfire or a Zero, A7M or a Yak-15. You know, those planes don't have the airspeed to keep up with something like this or a heavy fighter. You could be getting picked on by a 262. So you want to utilize those tools that you do have and don't just throw your hands up and say, oh, freaking 302, I can't catch him. Game over, I quit. 302 is not invincible by any means. It's actually quite a weak aircraft other than its airspeed. Let's take a look at some details of it. The overall airspeed we've, we've talked about. I have my plane ultimate equipment. This was actually one of the first planes I put ultimate equipment on back in the day. And what I've done here is increased its overall viability with its relatively mediocre engines. You have two jets. You've also got a rocket here in the back, which you're using for your boost. And you have four 20 millimeter cannons. These 20 millimeter cannons are actually not very good. Not very good at all. Early, uh, early World War II 20 millimeter cannons, they overheat very, very quickly, have very, very short range. There's four of them, so they do a decent amount of damage and it's about balancing that out. A trigger, 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 trigger. Even trigger, 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 triggering has them overheat. So you need to be just mindful of your gunplay. But there's four of them. If you're getting them to hit, they're doing a, a decent amount of damage. Nothing to complain about in that regard. Unfortunately, you're not able to increase with the forward firing weapon slot. There is no forward firing weapon, so there's no increase to the guns. I can't put reinforced bolt carriers or gas operated action on here, or even long gun barrels, obviously. You're just kind of stuck with what you're stuck with at tier 7. A period 2 premium plane does not have all the equipment slots that a period 3 premium plane would have or even a tech tree, a tech tree plane would have. But that's okay, what have we done here with our equipment? We do wanna make sure that our accuracy is as strong as possible. 
This is my build. Do with it as you choose. It's like I'm putting out a disclosure here. Some people are going to want to put a survivability build with this plane, which blows my brain, but everybody's going to fly differently. Some people are going to have more success with a stronger built plane. I have more success leaning in on the plane's strengths, which is its speed. So that being said, you only have two options when you're in period two, and that's going to be cockpit armor and sight. Cockpit armor for my game style is not going to be viable for a plane like this. I want to just lean in on the sight, I guess, because that's all I've got the option for. If I was able to put radio equipment or G-suit on here, that would be pretty awesome. But I can't, so I won't. And so I've put the, uh, the collimator sight on here. It is an ultimate, but it's not calibrated all the way to 478. For my airframe, you've got you know four different options. Reinforced skin would lower my airspeed, so I'm not going to do that. Reinforced airframe would raise my hit points, but lower my maneuverability. There is a discussion to, uh, to utilize that instead of the two items I've used. Raising your hit points is certainly not a bad thing in this plane. Lowering your maneuverability doesn't really matter because the plane's maneuverability is pretty poor anyway, very poor anyway. So there is a discussion point to utilizing that, even for somebody like myself who doesn't go all in for or even mediocrely in for survivability on this plane there's still a viability to increasing your hit points and and your survivability in that regard you'll have noticed though i put polished skin on this plane polished skin obviously is going to increase the overall cruise speed it increases the acceleration while diving it does reduce the maneuverability and maneuverability in terms uh, but some of the bonus characteristics were able to mitigate that a little bit. R raising the overall cruise speed is certainly a good thing for this plane. And the acceleration while diving is really important. You'll notice in the beginning of the, my battles, I got myself up to the highest optimum altitude, meaning that if I needed to dive down, my acceleration is going to kick in even more. And that's always going to be helpful. The other item that I used on here, instead of the reinforced airframe was the lightweight wing frame. Yes, this gives maneuverability. Yes, this plane doesn't have very good maneuverability, but every little bit helps in that regard. It kind of counters the, more than counters actually, the maneuverability reduction from the polished skin kind of evens it out in that regard. And some of the bonus characteristics on here, just helping the roll maneuverability, helping the crit damage reduction, I'll take it. It does also lower the overall hit points of this plane. Again, my thought process with a plane like this is don't get hit in the first place. I'm trying to go as fast as possible. Even if a plane sees me coming, as long as I notice that they see me coming, I'm going to go in and get out of dodge. Not necessarily in a straight line, because if it's a Yak-9 or something like that, or something with big cannons that just needs one good shot to kill me, I am going to go away, but in a, in a kind of wiggly manner. <laughs> don't know this exact term for that. Um, but lightweight wing frame can help in those instances where I do need to get my guns on target quickly. If I'm going against a less maneuverable multi-role fighter, um, or if I know that I need to kill this plane in front of me as quickly as possible, I want to be able to have that maneuverability to get my guns back on target. I've got two more planes that are inbound. I need to kill this heavy fighter really quickly, and I'm turning back around on him. Like I want to be able to do that sooner rather than later. And that way I can kill the heavy fighter and then deal with the two new planes that are inbound. Last item is an engine equipment slot. I've actually got an upgraded engine on here rather than another option that we have, which is the injection boost system. Let's go over the different options. So engine armor protection is going to reduce the airspeed. Again, I'm not going to utilize anything that reduces airspeed. It would help increase the engine's resistance to damage. So I get that. You don't want to lose your engines in the 302. You lose your engines and you're dead. But I'm not going to reduce my overall airspeed to save my engines. Other item is lightweight power unit. That increases the aircraft's maneuverability. Again, it's not the forte of this plane, so it's not what I'm going to lean in on. I'll take extra maneuverability, but I'm not going out of my way to get extra maneuverability. The other item that, that could definitely make sense on this plane is the combined injection boost system. This increases the boost's efficiency. And I've even got one lying around here. So my acceleration with the boost activated 
maximum speed with the boost activated, that would all be increased. The overall boost availability would be reduced. Uh, so instead of having six seconds, I'd have like five seconds. And you could always get like a bunch of good re-rolls for like boost availability or um, engine cooldown rate, things of that nature. This is definitely a, a potentially viable option for those of you that want to maximize the boost on the plane and maximize that impact to your overall flying ability. I've gone in with the uprated engine. Now do keep in mind, mine is a special project to Germany, which is funny because it's on a Soviet plane. But I've gone with the uprated engine, why? Because I want my overall base airspeed to be higher in this plane. I've played them with both and they're both perfectly viable. They're, you could, you know, it just matters your your thought process or matters your comfortability, matters what you're looking for. I want my overall base airspeed to be a little bit higher. And with the uprated engine that increases your base speed, you know, your, your minimum speed is going to be higher. Your boost speed obviously is not going to be quite as high as your overall boost speed if you've got the injection system. So it just matters what you're looking for. And, and impacting my low speed to make that higher, I, I tend to like. And that's what the upgraded engine is going to do. Changing this equipment slots to the boost injection system will increase my overall top speed while I've got the boosts going. Uh, but, you know, your boost is going to be reduced in that situation. There's it just, it's six of one, half dozen of another. It just matters what you're looking for. If you want just the, the top speed that you can ever possibly get while you've got the boost going, go with the injection system. When you don't have the boost going, you're going to be slower than the upgraded engine plane, but you're going to be faster when you've got the boost going. So it matters what you're looking for, right? It matters your play style. That's the great thing about World of Warplanes. I love the fact that you, know, you play World of Tanks or you play World of Warships, play War Thunder, all those things, and there's basically one or two builds for any given tank or ship, right? Um, you really you really have the ability with flexibility um, and the different equipment items in World of Warplanes to have a plane go around your play style. Even if it's just nuanced. Prime example would be, I know a lot of people play F94D with a complete maneuverability build, and I've got it with a complete speed build, and I know people that have it with a survivability build, and they're all viable based on your play style. All, all the people that I know that have an F94D love it no matter how they build it, and that's great. That's great. For consumables, I've got my standard kit for my consumables to start off with. First aid package, I want to get my pilot in as soon as possible. Pneumatic control assist, I only use this. I'd never dogfight with this plane, just like I wouldn't use this for a heavy fighter, even if I've got pneumatic control assist. I utilize this to get my guns on target quicker. I used it at the end of the second battle, I think, to get behind, to get my guns on target on that heavy fighter quicker, so that way I could deal with the planes that were behind me sooner. The argument could certainly be made to use emergency control system instead. That'll put your wings and tail back in if they get knocked out. I don't get mine knocked out all that often, but remember when you get your wings or tail knocked out, your overall top speed is reduced by, I think, 10%. It's definitely reduced. Yes, I think it's 10% per item. So if you get your tail and wing knocked out, it's reduced by 20%. And then engine cooling, that extra 10 seconds worth of boost on a plane like this, that only gets six seconds worth of boost that's pretty darn nice uh, very very nice then universal ammo just because you know why not the thing that i have on here that i've mentioned before and i'll mention in this video as well is improved mixer control most of you are going to want to put the manual engine restart manual engine restart will when your engine gets knocked out put your engine back in, in a plane like this where speed is everything you lose your speed you lose your engines and you lose a lot of speed in this plane because your your overall um, cruise speed is, is very low for this plane. You lose your engines, you're a dead duck. doesn't matter if you're top tier or not. And so manual engine restart is almost certainly the way to go for most pilots. I've gone all in on speed, put in the improved mixture control. This gives uh, an additional 5% engine thrust and 2% to cruise speed. Um, again, I understand that I'm playing with fire, quite literally, that if I get my engines knocked out, I'm dead. Uh, but I trust my skill set that I'll hopefully keep myself alive. Even if I get my engine knocked out, my thought process is I won't get my engine knocked out because of my pl the way I'm flying. But I just understand the repercussions of my decision on choosing this. Don't choose this just because Postal chose it. Choose it if you're 
if you trust your skill set enough to to overcome and fly the plane in this kind of manner. So just be mindful of that. If you're going for a survivability build, uh, for whatever reason, you definitely want the engine restart in here instead. So that's my overall build on this plane. Do keep in mind that because it is a premium plane, you can put whatever flipping pilot you want in here. I have my LA-15 pilot, but I could put any pilot in here. My LA-15 pilot has Marksman 2, which helps with the cannons since they're so weak. I want to make sure they're hitting. Uh, it also has... Um, excuse me, you also have aerodynamics expert and aerobatics expert. So aerodynamics expert is going to further increase my speed and maneuverability equipment. And then of course aerobatics expert is just simply going to give me more maneuverability. I also have battle tested on this pilot. Uh, in the meantime, while I'm waiting to get my, my next point, battle tested reduces the pilot's injury, increases controllability if my pilot does get knocked out, um, or if the wings and tail get knocked out, excuse me. I'm going for resilience as my next pilot point in 2.3 million more XP. Resilience is a really, really good skill, and I probably would have gotten it sooner, but now that I've got the Marksman 2 and, and these two here, like I don't want to get rid of any of those just to get resilience. Anywho, 302 is really, really fun plane. It's not by any means a great plane. It is a good plane. It's especially good if you're going against people that don't know anything about it because they're just going to get torn up. If you're flying it, like a speed demon. Do not, do not, do not turn fight with this plane. You will not do well, and you will wonder why you keep dying. Be mindful of your speed. Be mindful of keeping your engines going. Be mindful of the map and what's coming inbound, what's going outbound, and that'll help you really succeed with the 302. If you have any additional questions, feel free to comment down below. Feel free to hit me up in Discord. The link is in the description. And we can continue the conversation there. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay, and I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.